Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. I am going to show you how to do a project that I've been working on. It is Christmas on one side and it's spring on the other side, so it'll last more than one season. I certainly hope you join me and so along. So we're gonna turn this into a two-sided table topper. One is a Christmas theme, and on the other side we'll have spring. So some of the things that you're going to need, you need to go ahead and pick out your fabrics. Um, for this one, I have these first three as my Christmas side. I do love pink Christmas, or I think as some people call it, pinkmas. Um, and I actually have these two are gonna be in my next project. And then of course, you're gonna to need to pick out some for your spring side. I'm using this fun fabric here with all the little animals. I love spring, I love all the baby animals. And then of course, some different hexes. Now, how many do you need? Now for the front, you're gonna need one for the center then you're gonna need eight for this diamond, and then 16 for this final diamond. On the back side, you're gonna to wanna to do 16, and then have a piece of fabric that's large enough to fit inside underneath. So it'll be about this size. So not a super large piece of fabric. Now, of course, I am using one and a half inch hexagons. You can use whatever size you want. You can make it larger or smaller than what we're doing here. But what you need to think about is one side is Christmas. So go and grab all of your Christmas hexes that you've done and start laying that out. You don't even have to do the same shape that we're doing. You can do something totally different. This process will work for other shapes as well. So the first thing I start with is the flower in the center. And then to make it a diamond, you put one on each end. Now you can see this is not fussy cut, but you are welcome to fussy cut. So then for your next row, almost like your border, you're gonna go around with that. And remember you need 16 for the outside border. And then just keep going. So of course you're going to put all of your hexes together just like you normally would and you'll end up with this layout. 16 hexagons. Once you have your window and you have your front piece, lay your front piece out. You're going to want to cut a piece of batting that lays out equal to this piece. We're just gonna set the batting aside. And then the next thing we'll do is we know we need this to lay on this because this was gonna be the back side, but we don't wanna stitch it like this because you don't want all of your seams to show. So what you're gonna do is put pretty side up and pretty side down with the paper still inside. And then you're gonna go around and attach it with a whip stitch all the way around. Once your front and back are sewn together, go ahead and remove your papers. I like to press it with an iron before I remove them just to make the edges nice and crisp and then go around with your scissors, and if you want, clip the basting threads. Makes them a little bit easier to remove the papers. Make sure you save your papers for your next project because you can definitely reuse them over and over. Okay, go ahead and turn it over and remove the papers on the spring side using the exact same technique. Okay, so we're on to the next step now that we've taken all of the papers out. Go ahead and flip it to where the opening is, and you make sure it's sewn down everywhere. 
And I flip it back over and I'm gonna lay the batting out on this and then watch what we do here. We are just gonna start turning the pieces from the other side to cover up the batting and just kind of fold it in, make sure all the corners are tucked in and all the points are into the points. And you're just gonna do this all the way around. It's very helpful if you have um, chopsticks or something like that that's pointy but not too sharp to kind of help you get into all the little grooves. And then just keep working your way all the way around. Okay, so you can see I've got my chopstick and I'm really gonna go in and make sure that the batting is pushed into the point and that the points are pushed out nice and sharp. You really only get one chance to do this because once you've sewn it together, you have to kind of take a pin or a needle or something and kind of pull the points out. So try to do a really good job now so you don't have to worry about it later. Okay, now that I am done with that step, I'll take my spring fabric and lay it on top of the window and center it, making sure that it's completely um, covering up the opening and that there's seam allowance all the way around. Fold it up to the middle of the hexagons, to that seam or a little bit in front of it. Now this fold is actually going to be your cut line, so take your scissors and trim off that excess. And the reason I'm doing it this way is if you had a directional fabric, this will help you keep your pattern lined up correctly. Now, if you want, go ahead and put um, a pin into that fabric and batting if you want to keep it from moving or just be really careful and just gently press that under, making sure that you don't move the fabric at all. So right now your layer is Christmas, batting, and spring, and they're all together, and you're just gently pushing that underneath those hexes. And you can see that we're almost done. We're getting very close. Okay, so go ahead and pin this layers together, and then take it and quilt it how you want it. And this will be your finished piece. Um, of course, you've got Christmas on one side, and you have spring on the other. Stay tuned and we'll do some mug rugs to go along with this. Okay, for my spring side coaster slash mug rug, I've decided just to use the pink fabric for the centers and the petals. So what I'm going to need, I'll need eight hexagons in the pink fabric and of course matching thread and the batting to equal the size of the finished hexagon. So since I'm using one and a half inch hexagons, the size of the batting will actually be a three inch hexagon, or you can just trace it once you have your coaster finished. Of course, go ahead and baste all of your hexes the way that you would normally, and then start joining them together. This is what they will look like when they're sewn together, a flower with kind of one extra just attached to it. Okay, so now they're all attached with just the one extra, but what we need to do now is connect those Vs together. Just go ahead and start connecting this V together from top to bottom, either way, and do that for all of them. Okay, you can see I've got that first V sewn together and if you keep folding them up you can kind of get a visual of what you're going for. So I'll probably go ahead with the table topper go ahead and make four coasters for um, the spring and then four for the Christmas theme. I think that will make a nice gift. Okay here I'm doing the very last V it does get a little bit more challenging to hold on to it. Okay, as you can see, I just have 
two sides left and the center petal and that's the back. So we'll go ahead and take our papers out at this point. Okay, if you want to press this, that would be fine. That way it'll crease these really well for you to sew it. So the next step, make sure that this batting is the right size for this. Might be a little big, trim it a little. Okay, so the trick is we're gonna set the coaster on top of the batting and hold it in place as we fold the corners over, keeping the batting into the point. And it's okay if it moves a little bit. You can still, after you get it right side out, you can still move it around a little bit and get it exactly where you want it. Okay, after you get the batting in and it's flipped over, you wanna make sure your points look good. So you can pull out your chopstick and use that to pull the corners out, or you can use a straight pin and just gently grab the fabric in the corners and pull those out because this is the last chance that you will have to go ahead and get that batting exactly where it needs to be. After you have your corners pulled out and you like the points on them, you are going to need to close up those two seams. So now we need to go ahead and sew these closed. You want a matching thread and it doesn't matter what kind of stitch you use for it. The goal is just that you don't really want it to be seen <clears throat> a lot. You want it to kind of go away like all the other stitches. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start inside and try to go between that seam and the top. Just pull my needle through there. So now my, my knot is on the inside. Now I'm just gonna take a little bite here, go underneath. So it's kind of like we're doing the whip stitch, but we're doing it on the outside. And go to the next side. I'm gonna travel underneath come up on the other side just a little bit and do that see it kind of disappears it looks just like the other side so just keep doing that so it's like a whip stitch but on the outside I hope you can see what I'm doing and you're just going to keep doing that until you've got it completely closed so you should only have two sides to close, these two. Now, for some reason, I actually forgot to sew this side. So I'm probably going to take it apart, sew it, and then put it back together. Just because these top seams are easier to sew than these side seams are. Here's a little bit better close-up of the video. I didn't realize the camera had moved on the last shot. So really, you're just doing a whip stitch on the outside. You're taking little bites on the front and you're traveling behind the fabric and you're just barely gonna see a little bit of the stitch. I do like to pull it tight and that kind of hold, hides the thread as well. Take your time with these stitches because this is going to be part of the finished product and it doesn't take that long since it's just the two seams. Of course, once you're done, you're going to want to quilt these um, in order to hold the batting in place when they are washed. So you can either hand quilt them, which I will do if I have an abundance of time, or feel free to take it to your machine and just run a few lines on it, do whatever pattern you want, and they will make wonderful gifts, or you can keep it for yourself. If you are enjoying these videos, please give me the thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe. You're always welcome to share my videos with your friends and family. I'm also on Instagram and Facebook, and I hope you find me there as well. Thanks so much for joining me, and happy sewing!